Connections are a key ingredient of an engaged and successful company culture. Yet, building relationships in a world of remote and hybrid work is a challenge. So, how can you create a sense of belonging and purpose for employees? Enter Viva Engage, part of the Microsoft Viva Employee Experience Platform. Designed to connect people across your company through conversations, communities, events, and open sharing. With Viva Engage, your employees can have discussions with coworkers, build and join communities, get answers to their questions, share their unique stories and interests, and find belonging at work. Everything from connecting with company leaders to sharing best practices with first-time managers to creating a place where pet lovers can show off photos. Viva Engage strengthens relationships and helps build a culture of involvement in today's hybrid and remote environments. And because it is part of Microsoft Viva and Microsoft 365, it's integrated into the apps and services companies are using around the world to empower people and teams to be their best. Hi, everybody. This is Randy Martinez from IT Pros Management. And today we have, we're lucky to have Michaela Julian from our Microsoft 365 team. We are going to be presenting some information regarding a product that's not really known in the Microsoft world. Most of us know about Outlook and Word and Excel, even SharePoint and Teams. But in today's world, I think there's a product out there that Microsoft has put out and is actually starting to push a lot. And we have been using it internally, which has helped our organization really communicate better. Uh, it's called Viva Engage. All right. It's something that I think that uh, I was talking to Michaela about and I said, hey, let's do a presentation or a session on this because it's not really well known. And it's something I think will provide a lot of value to organizations, both big and small, to be able to communicate better with their communities, engage with uh, well, Viva Engage, engage with their folks and uh, be able to provide uh, more information in a very robust fashion and a much more creative way than just you know, your old emails, even your old chat sessions. So uh, I'm going to let Michaela take it over from here. She is using the product a lot, and I'm going to let her uh, present this. Michaela, it's all awesome. yours. Thanks, Randy. Yeah, so really great to be here with everybody today. Um, it's really exciting to be talking about a lot of products within the Viva platform, if you will, which is a whole other conversation for later. But <laughs> yes, today we're going to focus on Viva Engage specifically, which I'm going to call not your mother's yammer. Um, and the reason why I say that is because formally Viva Engage was actually a product called Gammer that you may have heard of that was wrapped up within Microsoft 365 products. Um, it wasn't as highly utilized as Microsoft would have liked to have seen, so they really revamped it and then packaged it in with the Viva Suite, which we can elaborate on later. Um, it is a really awesome product that I would essentially say it really serves a purpose and a role in just keeping your company engaged, um, kind of going through different kinds of ways to communicate and send out notifications, kind of on a user by user basis, rather than instant gratification notifications with things like Teams and email. Um, it's really an area for you to kind of go and receive your news and updates and announcements and sort of a social media like management fashion without actually having to focus heavily on it throughout your day to day workflow. Um, it really does just kind of serve the purpose of just fostering engagement within a workplace, um, as well as for external announcements as well, if you have things like that set up in terms of having guest users in, but it really is more of your kind of intranet based news source for announcements that you're putting out. Um, for example, I'm a marketing manager at my organization. A lot of the times I'm not only putting out announcements to my team about announcements and updates and changes with logos, iconography, events that we're going to be at, um, but I might be also reaching out to my partners where we have a specific what's called a community 
that they live in and I can share announcements with them about upcoming calls they may want to be attending with us, uh, resources that we've aggregated for them, and even put out questions in poll format for them to vote on to get the best out of the product that we provide to them. So there's a lot of different ways that it can be utilized, not to be confused with Facebook for Business. That's a separate tool, but we do kind of call it Facebook for Business in-house here uh, because that's essentially what it feels like. And we'll hop in and take a look at a demo example at some point today. Today, um, just to get a feel for the, the vibe essentially and, and what you can and cannot do with it. So all that being said, um, there's a lot of different ways, again, to use Viva Engage and use cases can vary from company to company and how you are going to go ahead and do that. Really, the main features are going to include your community's conversations, what's called a storyline, and then campaigning. Primarily, what we're going to focus on today is just giving an overview on what is a community. Um, a community is essentially a group of people um, within an organization with a common goal. So, for example, me and Randy are in part of the My365 community where we talk about all things Microsoft 365 announcements, events, polls, et cetera, that we send out there. Whereas if you're in an organization and you're also utilizing Viva Engage, you might have a community that's internal only, that's focused on solely giving out praise or updating people on new staff members that are coming in, company barbecues, et cetera. There's a lot of different ways that you can structure this. Um, and I've seen it done for sure by department. And I've also seen it done as generalized like that with common goal um, and then kind of just an area for fun for the, uh, for the company as as well. So with all that being said, Randy, you got any questions for me at the moment before we start talking about use cases, share screen and take a look at uh, the product itself? I think the first question that comes to my mind is uh, you mentioned your, your marketing manager, obviously I know what you do, but what other positions do you feel or see in other organizations that have implemented Microsoft Engage? Um, what are the marketing managers? Do you see HR people, sales? Which are the kind of the departments or the roles in organizations that you see adopting mm -hmm. Viva Engage? Yeah, so I've, I've actually seen it used in a lot of different ways. Um, definitely HR has used it as well for updates to, let's say, for example, if you have a benefits enrollment period that's coming up, um, it's a great way to quickly blast out that link, make sure that you're getting your users in to sign in and check those updates as quick as possible. Um, one of the beautiful ways I think I said in the beginning is that there's multiple different ways to receive your notifications kind of on your own cadence. Um, what's a great thing about it is that you have your own community that you can hop into and sort of view as that Facebook for Business storyline feed. You can also elect to not even utilize the platform if you're a heavy email user and would rather see it outside of your work hours those notifications will actually come in email format to you about two hours after activity, which is great. So that way we're custom. I think at, at this point in time, all of us are pretty accustomed to getting a notification on our phone, opening up and reading it. Um, but again, that can sometimes inhibit workflow for a lot of people. So after working hours or maybe even a couple hours after that announcement goes out, you're going to see that come through an email if that's a way that you prefer to work. So it's been great for a lot of HR departments. I've seen use it for announcements that are just General like that. Um, marketing internal communications, like I said, it's very great for me to be able to quickly shoot out any events, tips, tricks, and things like that that I may need for them to use in terms of sales as well. Um, I've seen sales teams also use it to quickly communicate at mentioning each other back and forth about pitches and things that they may be putting together. Um, and then I've even seen, uh, believe it or not, like some hospitality teams that are starting to adopt it as well and utilize it just for quick back and forth communication. Um, they've had areas where they simply just use it to sort of blow off steam professionally. Um, <laughs> and then other areas where they also use it for quick menu items and things that they can pick pin to the top for the evening and then just kind of go through it that way um, rather than having it in a team's chat or channel which again perfect use case and there's always a place for that as well but that's more of quick rapid communication whereas this is again you can pin a post and continue a conversation on it um, at your own pace rather than consistently receiving those notifications over and over again so a lot of different ways that we've definitely seen this um, utilized and you know we're open to even seeing how after we have this call, if anyone can see a way that this could go further for them in another environment or use case as well, because that's the beautiful thing about Microsoft 365 really is 
there's a place to fit almost every single one of these tools. Um, it just really takes a little bit of creative thinking on how we can make it work and then we run with it. Yeah, I'm glad you mentioned also, um, you know, at the end of the call, we are going to provide a link at the end of the call or QR code uh, to be able to, if you want to, you know, contact us and talk a little bit more about Viva Engage and how we can implement this in your organization, um, I have a, a link. I'll have a link for a discovery call so we can sit down and look at that uh, as an organization. Maybe we'll bring in Michaela as a, as an architect of this, a couple of people on her team, but also the use case that you mentioned that you, that I see that you guys use and you use it with us is technical. I mean, I know you guys provide. Uh, you know, David provides information mm -hmm. about technical updates coming out through that Viva Engage, and it's much more digestible, like you mentioned. Uh, it doesn't interrupt our workflow. I can go back and look at it later. So it's even from a technical team standpoint, providing those those imp updates that people need to know about, hey, something's coming up. Here's more information about it. Read it at your leisure, but at least you get it in a way that's digestible and, and again, has that social media feel to it. So that's what I really like about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And again, especially in the technical space and just really in any space, I feel it gets hard when you're working as fast as we are in today's world and you're receiving notification after notification and it gets a little crazy. So sometimes if you see something pop up that's so quick, it's just going to you see it and then goldfish memory, it's gone and then you're moving right. on to the next task. So having things like Viva Engage for us makes it great, especially for posting digestible pieces of content with a summary and then, of course, a deep link to the really detailed documentation that would otherwise live somewhere deeper in our SharePoint environment um, is really great because it kind of draws attention to something in what's called an announcement format stating this is important you should probably take a look at it rather than having somebody go siphon through a SharePoint resource online and say well just go find it it almost psychologically brings a little bit of urgency to it and just places a little bit more importance on it, which I find very helpful as well. When we, I know, Randy, we have the My365 community separate, yeah. um, but internally too, we, we do that as well because we're firing on all cylinders at all times. And a lot of the times we have to stay, you know, up here with Microsoft 365 knowledge and updates. Um, and it really catches my attention at the end of the night. I get a summary pretty much of everything um, Viva Engage related. And it's funny because I'll bring something up and be like, I had a question about this. And then I get, well, did you check Viva Engage? And I hop in and I'm like, well, sure enough, there's the announcement that I was looking for yeah. that I had a question on 15 minutes yeah. ago. Um, yeah, so it is a really great way um, to, to put out easily digestible pieces of information, share knowledge and and have fun with it too. It is a more of a laid back format than I would say, um, you know, Teams bombarded or anything inbox, else. Yeah, bombarded yeah, inbox, yeah, bombarded yeah. inbox. <laughs> yeah, love me a little well, bit of, you know, email outlook, but you know, there's nothing fun about sending in a plain text email with no gifts. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly, exactly. Well, that's great. I mean, I, I really think this is going to be a very good informative session for a lot of people. So why don't we jump in maybe and look at uh, Engage or uh, sure. your slides and see what we're doing. Absolutely. I'm going to share my screen here. And if you could just let me know when you could see it, that would be phenomenal. Uh, I can see it. All righty. So Viva Engage. This is, again, my demo account in this place. I am Megan and I have full access to all the tools that I would need to really create a community um, and then take a look at storylines. Um, so essentially, Viva Engage is built into um, most frontline level Microsoft 365 subscriptions, all e-licenses, and then it's also available as an add-on, which I can talk a little bit about cost at the end. Um, but for most plans that would be working within a, an organization or a business, it's available. And again, if it's if not, there is a separate add-on license as always with Microsoft to access any of these tools. Um, with it, that being said, in our app launcher in the upper left-hand corner, just like any other app within the Microsoft 365 suite, this would become available for you as engaged. So it's this little like person with the arms wrapped around it is what I think that, that icon is representing here. <laughs> That's your, and when your you, Warshak test, right? <laughs> yeah, right. So when you pop in to engage, uh, this is really what you'll see on your home screen. And I'm just going to give it a quick refresh and see if, if I've got any updates. So I don't really have anything here because, again, we're in a demo. So in, in the instance of, of having multiple different communities and areas, 
you would see your options listed here under my communities. We get taken to that home screen and it's just giving us our own area. If I were frequently using this within my own environment, I would see other updates and things on my own home screen that are relevant to my storyline, right? So from this area here, what's interesting about it is aside from having a community, and storylines that follow tags and topics um, and things like that that sort of organize your thoughts. You can also post your own thoughts, ideas, or updates to sort of keep like a visual diary of what you have going on organizationally. And it is visible to only people within your organization. Um, and you can kind of govern that and see what's going on here by clicking that little people icon. So it's going to tell you that this post can be viewed by only people in your organization and then people who follow your storyline, uh, meaning whatever it is that you're talking about. So still only people within your company could go ahead and follow that storyline. But if, for example, you have a topic or something that you're frequently posting about and it could be relevant in a larger organization, you can do that here as well, separate from what goes on in communities that are sort of permission based. You can also add additional people, same functionality and features with teams. You can at mention anybody on your team. You can go ahead and add in images. You can add GIFs. You can add link attachments and then topics. Topics are what I think are really cool um, and something that we heavily utilize um, within our organization to structure specifically this My365 community that we keep going back to. So what is a topic? A topic is essentially a container for a specific topic that you're covering that you can click into at any time that would essentially pop up on this right hand side here um, and would allow you to essentially filter through um, any given conversations that have had around that particular topic. Um, one good example of this is that we actually have a session every Wednesday night that we host called Ask Me Anything Hour. And we frequently post about it um, and discuss topics that may have come up during then, announcements that may be happening about that particular evening. Um, and so we have a topic that we will throw in when we post and make sure that we add it in there so that when other people who come in to see it are interested in solely seeing content regarding AMA, they can click into that and then see all past announcements and conversations that have happened, polls that have gone out related to conversation we may have had during that period of time. Um, so it makes things a lot easier structurally to, to go through and just kind of siphon through with another filter rather than the basic filters that are included, um, like most recently posted um, or most recently responded to, which we'll take a look at. I'm going to hop into communities just so that we can spend a little time talking about that there. So communities, communities, like I had said in the beginning, are essentially, again, groups of people with a common goal um, that we get added to and post about. So I created as a test here the wonderful world of Microsoft 365. If I had additional communities, I could hit view all communities and I would see a list of all here if they were again publicly available within my organization. This one that I went ahead and created here is actually private. So you do have two options with privacy here. You can make one publicly accessible to everybody within your organization, or alternatively, you can individually add members when you're initially creating that community. So you can personalize this as much as you really want to as well, just kind of like that Facebook for Business feel I was talking about. I think it structurally looks very similar to the way that we play online. So I, I really like the way that they chose to make this user experience look so similar to tools that I feel like we're using every day anyway. Um, it looks like LinkedIn for Business. It looks like Facebook for Business. Um, and again, it, it has that same commonality with just going ahead and having your thought bubble, you post, you format, um, and then it has your fun options that are included here. Of course, we can customize your cover photo. We can customize or upload a logo, whatever that one you want to make it. And then again, basic controls um, just from top down. You can favorite a particular community by hearting it. And then it's going to be one of the first things that pops up on that home page we were talking about. You can copy a link directly to join that community. And then, of course, with all things Microsoft 365, 
most additional settings that you might be looking for are hidden under those three dots. <laughs> so like I also mentioned, sometimes working, we don't always want to receive notifications um, and we might want to just check this at our leisure. You can also mute communities. So aside from having the additional settings of receiving those notifications in your email at a later time, checking it at your leisure, you can mute these entirely and then just come in when you're ready to take a look at it. Um, you can also, again, entirely independently subscribe by email. If you are a full email person that doesn't care about all these new tools, that is fine. You can still benefit from the information and participate through email as well. Ironically, and again, we always talk about additional tools and features, Randy, but if, for example, you might be using another portion of the Viva platform um, and have a Viva landing page, we could perhaps take the embed link for this as well and put that in there, which we can talk about at a later time as well. But that is also an option that is here. Um, you read my mind. You read my mind on that one. I was just going to ask you about that. <laughs> so, yeah, you, you can do that. And I'm, and I'm wondering what they're getting at with there too, because I'm pretty sure that it's a native um, native tool that, that comes in there, but I'm wondering what they're getting at. It might have something to do with the Power Platform, but we'll talk about that later. Right. Um, few different ways that you can take a look at this before we even talk about conversation controls is that you've got conversations, you've got about, you've got your files that have been shared back and forth within here, and then events that might be related to this conversation or community as well. So if there was an event that was ever posted about in here, um, you'll see that same structure if you're familiar with SharePoint Online or Teams document libraries. They get organized very well within this community as well, because no matter what we do within Microsoft 365, whether it be at Teams, Viva, Engage, there's always a SharePoint environment that's backing it up to make sure that that data is being saved, secured, um, and again, applying those same security principles and policies down across the board. So very similar look and feel and it's separating the data to make sure that this is living solely in this community and not bogging down your structure elsewhere. But back to conversations, like I said, very simple. We hit share thoughts, ideas, or updates. And we have this very user-friendly formatting tool here where we can type anything in and say, hey, wonderful world of my 365. It's so great to be here with you. And we can add additional people if we would like to. I can see again that this is specific to my organization, but if I want to at mention anyone else that may be participating in this, for example, I utilize this a lot when I put out call announcements for the next month. Every Friday we're hosting calls, but we have different presenters that come in and out um, on our team. So I will often pull it out, what those topics are going to be in a very digestible format, and then at mention the person saying hosted by insert name here. And they get that notification not only as a reminder that they'll be presenting that day, but also just receiving as that they can come in here, they can like it, they can comment on it, um, and really get the engagement flowing within the community, which is great. Um, this is where the fun kind of starts, aside from my very bland piece of information that I have <laughs> entered in here as an important announcement. Um, this is where we can format and choose the method that we actually want um, to utilize here. So there's, again, four main parts. We have discussion, which is this little orange bubble. We have question format, which looks like this. And then we have praise, where you can go ahead and raise a staff member if they did something really great. Let's say Grady did something awesome. This is going to send praise to him, but also make it visible to everybody within the community that we are honoring him in some way. And then we also have poll, which is very familiar to us. I'm sure we've all responded to a lot of polls in our time voting on whether what we want to eat for fun Friday or what day works best for us in meetings etc. So you can put in a question here and then your answers and you can add additional answers as well if needed once you get to your limit here. Um, and that again is going to get sent out as what's called an announcement if we hit this announcement button. Otherwise, this is solely going to live within the world of Viva Engage. By hitting this announcement button, 
This is going to notify, I'm gonna zoom in on this little notification that comes up here. It's gonna notify all the members immediately via Teams, Mobile Push, and Viva Engage Inbox, meaning they're gonna receive notifications. If they live in Viva Engage, you also have what's called that Viva Engage Inbox, which lives right up here on your home. And then you also have an option to send emails immediately. So it does say here too, email notifications will be sent after two hours if announcement has not been read in other channels. So if you are working, you haven't seen it in Teams, you haven't opened your phone, um, and you also haven't seen it within the platform of Viva itself and gone into that inbox, I'll be honest, I've never opened my Viva Engage inbox. <laughs> I do it through email or I get it through Teams. You also have the option to send emails immediately, which I do this a lot. Um, as a marketing manager, when I'm sending notifications, you know, at 10 o'clock in the morning and I'm posting a reminder announcement, for example, it's really important. Um, and I'm saying, hey, today's 2 p.m. partner call topic is insert topic here. I don't want that to be received two hours after I post because I want to give them ample time to remember, okay, I've seen that, moving on, moving forward. So just keep that in mind if you are exploring this tool and utilizing it. Um, it definitely has taken us being kind of one of the trailblazers that first adopted this tool when it came out. Um, some trial and error internally because there were times when I would have uh, some of my staff members sending me notifications at like 10 p.m. And I'm like, I am not reading this right now. <laughs> but then there's times where, of course, it's absolutely appropriate for things like that, depending upon, again, what industry or in the topic that you could be discussing, um, et cetera. But if I'm sending a kind of reminder announcement for something that's going on during that day, I do go ahead and hit that hidden, very hidden piece of text there um, and check this box that says immediate email delivery which means whatever I'm sending out is going directly to their inboxes so that, again, whenever you check your email, you can respond to at your leisure, but it's there. Um, before I move on from that, Randy, do you want to to jump in and bring anything up about different kinds of um, just the one thing I mm -hmm. Yeah, the one thing I just kind of want to put out there really is, is and maybe you can chime in on it, is... Um, Obviously, for me, security is always important across the board, no matter what application solution we're using. Um, today, that has to be kind of the first question you ask, even before asking what solution can I use? Is what kind of security does that solution provide? So obviously, being a Microsoft product, this is leveraging um, the for the old folks like me, Azure Active Directory. For the newer folks, the, the Entra Identity Management System, um, that is being used I assume, and I think I know, mm -hmm. uh, within this environment. So the security, whatever permissions and securities are built in through those I identity user accounts, it's leveraged by this platform as well, correct? That's absolutely correct. And again, the beautiful thing about Microsoft 365 is that it operates on that Microsoft 365 graph and framework. So wherever we are setting up policies and applying them within our environments, it's really a trickle down effect. Um, so again, this going to your email, it's got that email protection policy that's already working on it, that's protecting it. It's got its own set of, you're right, um, endpoint manager and Azure Active Directory policies and Entra ID policies, all of the above, because every platform <laughs> counts here, uh, no matter what we're calling it. Um, and yeah, it is, um, it's definitely a very safe and secure platform and environment. I don't foresee anybody for any reason posting extremely sensitive information in the Viva Engage community. I wouldn't even say that it's designed for that. Um, but if for, for some reason somebody were to post a bunch of DNS records or social security <laughs> numbers out into a Viva Engage community, provided it's all internal, um, you'd be all right. It wouldn't be going outside of the organization. But I don't recommend doing that in any, in right. any way, shape, or form. This is more of a a lighthearted area to, to post announcements and to draw attention to other resources that might not be as lighthearted. Um, but to give it again, like we continue to say, a digestible delivery format. Yeah, I think that's what we're all looking for nowadays. I know I'm looking for a lot of solutions now towards the you know, end of this year. I'm looking for mm -hmm. solutions that are, again, like you just said, the keyword digestible and mm -hmm. that people will engage with because you can always pr provide information uh, in a very non-digestible, very dry manner, and it doesn't really stick. And you have to do yep. it over and over again, where if you do it in an engaging fashion like this, um, it can definitely uh, 
stick, you know, that idea, that thought, that topic, as you mentioned, uh, to the folks in your organization, as opposed to sending them a very dry email. Uh, mm -hmm. So we use, you know, we, we definitely use it more in the fashion of getting the information out and knowing that it's going to stick. So you're not going to send everything out, but things that you want to people to remember to go back to in an easy fashion, I think this platform is a good solution for that in a secure fashion as well. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I'll honestly, now that you just brought that up, this actually raised a point for me too that I, I've forgotten about because I've used it so much. Mm -hmm. I've almost done away with, as a marketing manager, emailing out polls to people. Um, no. Dry, dryly, I should say, um, mm -hmm. through campaigns, through forms, whatever it may be. Of course, there's a place for form fills and collections everywhere. Don't ever, don't ever stop that. But <laughs> when it comes to sending out, like I need feedback from you, or could you take the time to respond to this? They read that subject line. And then, like, like I said, we're moving on all cylinders. You just kind of have to in one ear out the other. And then you might want to respond to it, but somebody might be calling you on the phone with a mission critical task. And you're of course going to handle that rather than respond to my poll. <laughs> so right. I've actually found that I've received a lot more feedback, um, meaningful feedback honest feedback and responses in general by utilizing this poll feature or question feature um, within Viva Engage. And I, again, I'm not sure if that's the psychology behind this notification system that we're so used to utilizing today, um, where I feel like, I don't know, we're almost how many years, 15 years into social media adoption at this point, where we're heavily using these notification methods and have a little computer in our pockets where we just kind of take it out and feel like more comfortable being honest online. Um, but I almost feel like that's why I've I've seen more success with using Viva Engage for collecting honest data uh, when it comes to feedback and input on uh, topics and things that we should be covering and what people really need more from us, um, rather than just emailing out a form that doesn't allow them to so freely comment back and forth um, on a post after submitting an answer, which is really great. Um, so I highly recommend checking it out even for just simply testing the waters with that if you are in marketing or sales or anything like that at least from my experience it's great same thing with technical information um, we've gotten a lot of feedback as well that way um and honestly this is newer to me too because we have not yet tried it but like i said there is that events area under here so newer and i think we're all familiar at this point with being on a webinar like we're doing right now or being on a live event in some form or fashion, whether you're jumping onto Facebook Live, LinkedIn Live, Teams Live events, I think YouTube, they're everywhere. Um, Viva now has sort of its own create live event format that of course in some form or fashion will time in, in with the Teams platform. Um, more on that later, that is brand new and I'm really excited to see what's gonna be offered with this or maybe what communities that we can even jump into after having the tools that are publicly available for Microsoft 365 users to just benefit from. Um, but that integration is really cool um, and coming out. So if there is for some reason, maybe a uh, work from home day or a staff development day and you wanna do a live event through Viva Engage, you can do that and open it up to the whole community. That's cool. I'm excited to hit, uh, try that as well. Mm -hmm. Very, very cool stuff. I mean, from a, a standpoint of everything that lives within here, other than the storyline features, um, just taking a look at, again, where people are sharing their individual updates and experiences. Like I said, if I was posting as just myself, you could follow my storyline and see what I have going on here. It is a really skimmed down version, which I know is kind of unique to say about a Microsoft tool, but it really does serve the purpose of just kind of putting out general announcements, collecting data and having fun. Um, there isn't really much beyond that, and I'm sure there will be ways to integrate further and further in the future, but I think this was a nice way to jump into the Viva platform and start small and then talk about how we can branch from there, because, of course, if we were to start with Viva Landing, we would just be in this conversation yeah. <laughs> for two and a half hours. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I'm actually going to ask you about that. I mean, I, I think yeah. the first question that comes to mind and potentially something that, you know, uh, our, our viewers are maybe thinking about that is you get the juices flowing in the good old brain. Mm -hmm. um, can this be used 
externally uh, as an external communication source with clients, vendors, suppliers, and supply chain type of environments where obviously we talked about the internal community obviously mm -hmm. can use it, but can this be used as an external tool for a particular company to uh, get that communication, that engagement um, for outside sources? Mm -hmm. Conditionally, I would say yes. Um, it's imperfect because it would work in an environment where you have guest users added to the tenant that you're working off of. Um, for example, our My365 community is built right. within our house, but we have our guest users that come in through an access package. Within that access package, they're not only added to our SharePoint resources and landing pages that have all the data, the applications that come with being a member, but they also get invited to the, the Viva Engage community. Beyond that, um, it is not necessarily intended to be entirely utilized as an external source at this time. So again, I say conditionally because there's always a yes, no answer when it comes to some of these products. <laughs> well, I think for, for security's sake, I think you would want that to happen. And I think that's critical here is that accessing this, yes, you would create a guest user in your Microsoft account tenancy as uh, we know it as and then that would allow them access to and that comes along with like sharepoint libraries that you give access mm -hmm. to ex guest users this would allow that to happen as well so if you're uh, um, an organization that's currently using sharepoint and microsoft teams and you're inviting outside guests um, we have a large practice of law firms and uh, nonprofit organizations that coordinate with outside organizations uh, this mm -hmm. would be a good use case for that because you're already inviting those users to access the data mm -hmm. from you know, your SharePoint environment, and now you would just give them access to the Viva Engage platform. Um, the other one is, that I think about is looking at it from embedding this, and I know we talked about briefly in the embed, but embedding mm -hmm. that into your Microsoft SharePoint site. I know we, uh, and, you know, our, our team, we build out Microsoft SharePoint sites all the time, and we create dashboard effects for these SharePoint sites, which make mm -hmm. them look much, much better than a plain old vanilla SharePoint thing that you would spin up. But how would that look like, that Viva Engage community look like in that kind of SharePoint environment? Yeah, so in a SharePoint environment, it's a lot more skimmed down, I would say, and you have the option with really any tool to expand upon. Um, so let me actually see quickly if I can just share. Da, 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 well, Michaela's da, da. doing that. I just want to bring it up. Um, just kind of going back to what Michaela mentioned, Facebook earlier. Uh, I belong to a ton of Facebook groups. I know a lot of us do. Uh, when we go to a specific solution or consultant or something, they a lot of them have Facebook groups. This is that feel, that Facebook group type of feel where you're invited. Again, the security is there. You're only people that are invited or vetted and you know who's getting into your group. That's kind of the same thing, I think, for this. And I just want to, wanted to mention that because I think that connects you know, what we know, which is Facebook groups. A lot of us belong to those in, in professional positions or even, you know, if you're a parent and you're part of a PTA group or something <laughs> like that, you know, there's Facebook groups for there's millions of those Facebook groups across the world. So I think this, if you think of it that way, is is another way of looking at it as a Facebook group um, with a you know common goal, a common set mm -hmm. of standards. And I think that's something else we can, you know, draw upon. Go yeah. ahead. So you got your partner center. Sure. Up. And hang back to those Facebook groups. I'm an active mm -hmm. member of Roadie Mommy for the Rhode Island mothers out there. So I get it. There <laughs> and you hey, go. So when you embed um, sort of a Viva Engage layout, and again, we could go on and on about different ways that you can choose to lay out your SharePoint environment. But for the sake of timing and understanding, let's just talk about having it in this column format. Um, so this Viva Engage community is actually our My365 community, and I've zoomed in a little bit on the screen here, um, but it is a constant resource that sits on the right-hand side um, and essentially allows us to see featured announcements that have gone out. Um, we can see that there's been likes, there's been reactions here, and they're really just all designed to be almost evergreen announcements that are seen that are relevant to that given work week or the past week that you may not have seen and are now seeing. So my announcements might not look the same as somebody else who hops in there. Look, there's me um, <laughs> posting out announcements about asking anything an hour, but it's, it's again, going to be really user geared. So if I've already seen something and I've interacted with it, 
I might see something else that I have not yet seen, which is really great. So going back to the kind of that feed-based dashboard that Randy was talking about, it respects that same kind of technology and layout where it is respecting your user account. And from right here, I can also draft a message and post, and I can alternatively hit view all and then be taken directly into that robust Viva Engage community that I can see has quite a few members versus taking a look at our test version that we were looking at there. Yeah, I'm glad you showed this because yeah, definitely mm -hmm. it's a good uh, visual representation of how uh, we can, you know, we as an organization that provides these solutions and our Microsoft partners and we, you know, we are advocates for this, uh, can provide a platform that not only uses Viva Engage, as Michaela showed, but along with that, making a much more robust uh, environment for your organization outside of the Engage community. I mean, Engage is one piece. Uh, what we do a lot of times is, and Michaela, uh, Michaela and I have built out, I don't know how many <laughs> SharePoint <laughs> landing sites and Viva landing sites over the years, and for large and small organizations, for big purposes and smaller purposes. And throughout that, you know, being able to add these additional functionalities like that communication platform of Viva Engage, I think adds that additional value. It, it doesn't, you know, cost us an additional set of times because, again, it's so integrated with the other Microsoft solutions that being able to bolt something else onto that to make it more functional, like Michaela just showed, I think it's critical that people understand that if you have invested in a SharePoint environment, apparently, and it's very vanilla, very plain, I think, you know, contacting us and looking, you know, looking at us and saying, hey, how can we make this a little bit more dynamic, more robust, and then also bringing in that Viva Engage uh, solution, I think is critical. So I think that's something that I want to make sure that our viewers are, are quite aware that we're, yeah, we're presenting on Viva Engage, but again, it's just one solution that could be tacked on or bolted onto other mm -hmm. solutions that you may have. And again, uh, the one thing I found out, and McTaylor, you correct me if I'm wrong, but I know a lot of people have, you know, e five licenses, E1 licenses, business premium licenses, but they don't use it to the full extent. Yep. A lot of people are paying for business premium and they're just using email yes. <laughs> or Word and Excel, which is, you know, for us, Michaela and I, it's it's crazy that we basically see that happening. So, um, yeah, I think that's something that's important that we can definitely provide that level of uh, solutions-based architecture to organizations. Now, I mentioned licensing. McKinley, you want to mention, talk a little yeah. bit about the licensing? Sure. <laughs> yeah, oh, the, the elephant in the room, as always. Uh, if you're familiar with Microsoft, you know they offer a robust amount of licensing and services, and they are frequently changing, and pricing can be a little different depending upon the region you are in, so always consult just online and take a look. Um, or if you're going to schedule a call with Randy, you know we can go over things like that as well. Um, but realistically, what's going to be included or where this is going to be included is for the frontline workers. So F3 licenses is going to have um, access to basic Viva Engage features with community participation, posting and conversation and following storyline. They are moving in a direction where there are going to be advanced analytics available in campaign management. Stay tuned for maybe a part two in the future. So that's not going to be included with F3. Looking at the E plans, enterprise plans, E1, E3, E5, full-fledged um, Viva Engage access is going to be included. And then, of course, there is the Viva Employee Communications and Communities add-on. Um, I believe it's $2 per user per month, and it's just going to essentially allow for leadership access um, for taking a look at additional reporting metrics that's sort of going to tie in a little bit more with the additional Viva experience. What we would really want to start looking at solely is going to be that $12 per user per month mark, which is the Microsoft Viva suite. It's the top tier license for each user that would allow them not only to get into Viva Engage, but access to additional Viva tools that would tie into like the Viva landings that we've taken a look at and talked about a little bit, um, as well as advanced analytics for leaders um, taking a look at workplace habits and even individual users looking at their own focus time and day-to-day -day schedules. Uh, Viva is a very robust suite and platform um, that is not just limited to this one solution that we looked at today as well. You know, if, uh, I know business premium is a very highly used in the, the business community. Does that include, is Viva Engage in business premium? 
For basic level communication, yes, <laughs> I believe it is. Um, it is. Yes, it is. Um, as far as uh, going a step further again with advanced analytics, um, I believe you have to throw in the $2 add-on on top of it now. It. Previously, <laughs> you could. Yeah. Um, if you're E-level, though, you're getting everything all wrapped into one. Perfect, perfect, great. I'm pretty knowledgeable. Michaela really is knowledgeable. So I think between the two of us or somebody else from her team, we would be able to provide you the proper information so you can make the proper business decision. Again, we're here to provide the information, provide education on solutions that can help the organization leverage what they're already investing in. So if you're investing in E1, E, you know, E2, E3, E5 licenses or business premium licenses, then I think, you know, this is something that you may want to look at. So we want to make sure we provide that information and be able to make sure that you're going in the right direction and leveraging your investment in your Microsoft products. So with that, uh, Michaela, do you have any other final kind of words of wisdom that you want to let folks uh, know about? Yeah, if you haven't heard of Viva Engage already and you're in one of the categories that we've listed above that likely already has this tool, check it out in your app launcher and, and just play with it before you even start considering really utilizing it. Just get to know it, play with it, check out the Viva platform in general. Um, there is so much to be explored that is included in a lot of the licensing that we see that is so underutilized day to day. Um, and then we often see people think that they need to outsource a third party tool that does the same thing that already exists under their tool belt. Um, so you could potentially be saving, you know, tens of thousands of dollars annually, if not more, if you're a larger organization by just checking out what exists within your app launcher already. And of course, if you have additional questions, reach out to Randy and IT Pros Management. Um, and if we need to, we can always get connected. Absolutely. Well, thanks a lot, Michaela. I appreciate your time today. Um, like I said, we are going to have that QR code on the screen uh, so you guys can schedule a discovery call if you want to talk a little bit more about Viva Engage or any other Microsoft solutions. That's what we're here for is to provide uh, our clients, uh, prospects, people that are just interested in looking at Microsoft as a solution for various, you know, matters in their business or in their nonprofit organization. Um, these platforms are designed to be very flexible, very adaptable, and uh, can actually uh, expand your process of doing things in your office in a much more engaging, fun fashion, not the old dry emails like we've been talking about <laughs> during this call. Um, well, again, thanks, Michaela. I appreciate the time. Um, uh, we'll have additional trainings like this, sessions like these, to sure. regarding other products. And we definitely want to make sure we bring that information out to our communities, to our clients, to our prospects, and make sure that folks are understanding that when it comes to Microsoft, it's not just one solution. It's just not email, and it's just not Word. There's so much, and uh, you're probably licensed for it already. That's why we see a lot of that. So again, thanks, Michaela. Uh, appreciate your time. Have a good thanks day. Thanks for having me, Randy. Have a great day. You too. Thanks. Bye. Bye.